I now request Dr. Syed Mohammad Hasibuddin Khadri, Head Department of English, to deliver his welcome address. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Maulana Azad National Urdu University, Professor Mohammad Mia Saab, Her Excellency Catherine Danani, Consent Journal, United States of America, and the Chief Guest of this conference, Professor Amina Kishore, Dean, School of Languages, Linguistics and Indology. Dr. Shugufta Shaheen, Organizing Secretary of this conference. Delegates from all over India, teachers, professors, deans, of Maulana Azad National Urdu University. Dear students, a very good morning to you all. <clears throat> For the establishment and contribution to any field of knowledge, we all know there are three phases. Foundation, Then, consolidation. Third one is expansion. And these phases mostly follow one another. However, we are living in an age which is known for cutting edge technology, cutthroat competition. And we cannot wait for the completion of one phase and the another phase taking place after it. In order to make any kind of contribution, you need to simultaneously grow. Council General Kathleen Dhanani to please come and deliver her speech. ...group of people. Um, it's a great pleasure to me to visit Urdu University for the first time. I'm sure it will not be the last time. And I'm thrilled to be having some role in this uh, two-day conference on new directions in comparative literature. I have to say from the introductory remarks, I'm very impressed for a young university and a young department that you're hosting your third conference already. As someone who is the, uh, the leader of a very young consulate, I think we've got a lot of work to, uh, to do to live up to, uh, to your great record there. Um, I think that the subject matter that you are going to be discussing over these two days is, is extremely interesting. I'm sure you will have spirited discussions, interesting presentations, and uh, I will not pretend, however, to be able to offer you any great wisdom on comparative literature. Um, I am a diplomat, not a scholar. I once upon a time was a, a scholar, or had pretenses of being a scholar, but at that time I was an economist. And, uh, and not a literature um, scholar. I did, however, attend a, a, a college as an undergraduate that is uh, well known for the study of English literature. And like your department, be familiar with. But the more I know, the more modest. immigration in the U.S., the immigrants that we have are fundamentally different than in the past. In 19, 1960, as recently as 1960, 64, 74 percent, three quarters of the foreign-born Americans came from Europe. So when the Americans thought about immigration, they really were thinking about Europe and more traditionally Western Europe and not even Southern and Eastern Europe. Today, 80% of the immigrants to the U.S. come from Asia and Latin America. And that is specifically because immigration legislation has changed in ways that are more welcoming to people from different areas. Um, so the U.S. has become, in terms of population, more geographically diverse in recent years. Of course, that's not, and I'm not that naive either, I, that's not the same as being multicultural. You can be geographically diverse without being multicultural quite easily. 
I think, though, that even stronger than the trend towards geographical dis diversity is the trend towards multiculturalism. And I say that based on my personal experience. When I was growing up, the normative image of the United States was of a melting pot. We use the phrase a melting pot. Um, melting pot implied that all these different populations were supposed to kind of blend and bring their own parts and become one. Um, attention to differences when I was young was considered to be discrimination. Um, we were supposed to be a harmonious, homogenous nation. It was considered to be more liberal, more forward thinking to value homogeneity and to ignore differences because in the, historically, um, the image had been that the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant norm was what all of the immigrants to the US should assimilate to. They were supposed to become that. As the years went by, especially through the 60s and 70s and as I was growing up, the vision was different. It was that all these different trends or all these different uh, components should come together and create a new America that would still be one, but that would be in some sense a blend. That was the melting pot 